Hello everybody, I'm Dan Hans. As most of you know, some of you don't know. Um, I'm here today, I'm going to do a little segment here called The Trials and Tribulations of Being a Chicago Harness Trainer. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that I went through, some of my experiences during my long tenure as a trainer in Chicago. Mostly I'm going to talk about the decade of the 80s, which was the best decade around, as far as I'm concerned. That was the glory days and the great years of harness racing in Chicago. Anybody that was around knows that. But I'm going to talk, I'm going to make other videos maybe and share some more of my experiences with you during the time I train and enlighten everybody on what it's like to be a harness trainer in Chicago, Illinois. So today, this morning, I picked up an old program I was looking through from Maywood Park, 1986, March 21st. Looked at the free-for-all race here. We were going for $16,000 back then at Maywood Park in 1986, the free-for-all. I was in that race with Eclipse. As you can see right here, Eclipse, trainer Dan Nance, driver Ronnie Boom Boom Marsh. I was in that race. I'll tell you a little bit of story about Eclipse here. I claimed Eclipse on the last day of the meet at Hawthorne. For eight thousand dollars off off of Walter Butch Paisley. The reason I claimed this horse was because two years prior to that, the Nance Racing Stable tried to buy this horse from from Paisley. He was racing in 40, 35, 40 claimers back then, and he was by Warren Breeze. This horse, by the way, and he took a fast. He was race timed as a two year old in a fast mile like fifty three. And back then, in nineteen eighty four, to go fifty three to be race timed in fifty three was monstrous. But anyway, he had him in a claimer, and uh, my owners were looking for a horse to claim, a nice horse to claim. So I asked Butch, I said, Butch, is that a horse Eclipse for sale? You want to sell him? He said, I'll let you know. So the next day I see him in the driver's room, and he says, no, he's not for sale. We don't want to sell him. I said, okay. So that was that. Then time passed. You know, a couple of years went by. And uh, in 1985, summer of 85, we were stabled at Paisley's uh, farm, with about two or three two-year-olds we had. We didn't have room for him over at uh, Red Book's farm where we had our racing stock. He w we didn't have any stalls left and we needed some stalls and Butch's farm was only like 10 minutes away from Book's. So we asked Butch if we could rent some stalls and train our babies over his track. And he said, sure, bring them out. So we were, we were there every day training the babies. And one day I was in the barn there and I looked at this horse sticking his head out of the stall. And he looked at his halter and it said Eclipse on the side. I go, oh my God, here's Eclipse. I said, no, that's where you've been, standing in the stall, huh? Looked horrible. Just looked horrible. I don't know what was wrong with him, lame, broke down. I don't know what was going on with him, but he was there in the stall. And I go, boy, that was the horse we tried to buy last year or the year before, whatever it was. And uh, that was that. Well, later on in the fall of uh, 85, Butch started racing him again, but he had dropped him in way, way cheap into those non-winners of six to be claimed for eight, stuff like that. And uh, he had him in really cheap. He won with him. He had a win, a third. Well, we were looking for a horse. We were at Hawthorne then in 1986. And uh, he was racing with Hawthorne. He put him in an eight claimer on closing night. We were looking for a horse to claim. And I said to my brother, I said, hey, why don't we claim that Eclipse for eight? You know, we wanted to pay 35 40 for him a couple of years ago. Let's, let, let's claim him. Maybe we can get him going, you know, class horse, you know. We could ask Ray Howard, our partner and our, our owner and our best friend, if he wanted us to go partners with us. We had just bought the farm recently, and we we uh, putting a lot of money into the farm, fixing up the swimming pool and everything. So uh, I said, the, I said, let's ask Ray if he wants to go partners with us on his horse to claim him four grand each, and we'll need about a thousand dollars for equipment and some vet work when we get him. Let's put up five grand a piece, and uh, and we'll claim him. So I called Ray. And Ray said, Yeah. Yeah, I'll claim it with you, but uh, here's the one condition. I don't want no bills, buddy. I don't want no bills. So here's what I'm going to do. You guys keep an extra 25% to cover my half of the training bill, but I don't want to see no bills whatsoever, buddy, none. I want to make that deal, and then I'll claim them with you. So we thought about it. We go, yeah, why, why not? What the heck? We didn't got to lose. We'll own 50% of them, plus we get an extra 25%. Because uh, Ray doesn't want to see any bills, and we'll go from there. So, boom, we went out and claimed him that night. I claimed him for eight. I remember getting on the bus that used to run 
from uh, the front side of the track by the winter circle at Hawthorne when it was really cold, ice cold, they had the bus running to the back side. I got on the bus after I claimed him and Earl Luttrell, Earl the Pearl Luttrell, was uh, sitting in the bus. He looks at me, he goes, hey Nance, did you claim that horse from, e uh, from Paisley, Eclipse? I go, yeah, I sure did, why? He goes, geez, you could have bought him for four. I said, really, Earl? Well, guess what? I paid eight for him. Oh, Earl wanted to throw a jab in at me. That, that's the way Earl was. Earl the Pearl. He was like that. So anyway, we cleaned him for eight. I took him back to the farm. Got him back there. He looked like death warmed over, to tell you the truth. Even though he was racing good, and he had a win in two minutes at Hawthorne. You know, and he was racing. You know, he was racing all right in that cheap class. But he looked horrible. He had a bad ankle, bad right ankle, bad. He his hair was about inches thick, all bleached out. He was a light horse, but just he looked like bleached out. He looked like a wolf man in the face. Matter of fact, the next day after I claimed him, he's standing in the stall. My wife come down to the barn, and she goes, "Hey, where's that new horse you claimed?" I go, "He's over there in that stall." Eclipse was standing in the back of the stall, the long way. And my wife looked over and goes, you claim that? Oh, I could remember. I could remember like it was yesterday. Eclipse, when she said that, he turned around and looked in the front by the stall gate and like looked at her. As if to say, you'll see. You're going to say that about me. You'll see. Yeah, because he looked bad. Anyway, we got the vet out there, Dan Benefield, our vet. I got Bentley out there. He also was my vet. So I like to use Benefield for some things, Bentley for other things. So we got him out there. Dan uh, injected the ankle. I told him to put some cortisone in it at first, and then we'll come back with some hyaluronic acid after that. And uh, Hylartin V, it was called. Okay. So... We did that, and uh, that ankle sucked right down, buddy. It sucked right down. Beautiful. It looked great. Drew some blood on him. He was full of worms and other things. We dewormed him. I put him on all the vitamins I could. Red cell, this, that, the other thing. Got him healthy. We waited two weeks to race him. I trained him after we got him all healthy and the ankles sucked down. Trained like a bear at the farm. Everybody that was out there stable at the farm, I had some people that were renting stalls me. They watched me train him. I put him in the box. I threw him in for 12 the first start off the $8,000 claim. Put him right in for 12 because I know he's a class horse. He run off, Laverne up, run off. Went off 5 to 2. Win by 2.5. Next start. I jacked him right in for 16000 Told me up. Wire to wire. Win by three and a half. Next start, Ronnie Boom Boom Marsh up. Went up. Put him in for 25000 Run off by three and a half lengths. Ronnie up. Six to five he went off at. Now what happened after that is the story. After that we went out to New York after that race for 25 to buy a horse out there. I get a call from the farm, I go, from Mickey Rodriguez, who was working for us at the time, grooming horses, and uh, he goes, hey, hey, Doc, put free-for-all, put uh, Eclipse in the free-for-all. What? In the free-for-all? Huh. Let me give Doc a call and see what this is about. So I called Doc from New York, and hey, Doc, did you post my horse free-for-all? Eclipse? Yeah, I sure did. Why? Well, what about the winners over 10? That, that's that's the next step up, really, and that's the class below the free-for-all. Well, why, why are you putting me in the free-for-all? Out, out of a 12, 16, and $25,000 claimer, just because I won. Okay? Can't I go winners over, Doc, before you put me in the free No, 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 no. I'm putting you in the free-for-all, he says. You destroyed the 25 claimers, and they go for the same purse as the winners over. I go, yeah, but, Doc, you know that's a much, much, much tougher class, Okay? Come on. Yeah, well, you destroyed them. and I, 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 The same person, I'm putting you in the free for. I go, okay, all right, all right. I go, yeah, well, nothing I can do about that, I guess. You're the race secretary. 
but I'm going to get the rail, right? Because every time you post the horse out of a claimer, out of a high claimer, and or, or even the winner's over and you move them up to the free-for-all, you give them the rail as with full quota N here. Full quota N. When the winner's over 10, you put him in the free-for-all, he drew the rail. Not draw the rail, you gave him the rail. Okay, and that same thing with all these other horses that come out of, out of a, a winner's over. Well, he says to me, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with the race yet, but don't worry, you won't be on the outside. I said, all right, so good. Next morning, I get a call from the farm from Mickey again. Hey, hey, the eclipse is in Friday night. Oh, really, Mick? Yeah, yeah, he got the seven hole in the seven horse field. What? The seven hole in the seven horse field, first time in the free for all out of a claimer? What is he doing to me to stop Narotsky? Boy, this guy is evil. Is he brutal? He knows what he's doing. All mad because I claimed the horse from Paisley and I win three straight with him, jacked him up every start because he's an old class horse and I got him healthy and sound. Huh? Yeah, that's all it was. Old Doc. Yeah, I even told him that on the phone. He called the farm one time asking for a horse, uh, one of my other horses to fill a race. I said, he goes, by the way, Dan, can I ask you a question? He goes, sure, shoot, Doc, shoot. How'd you get Eclipse so good? I go, you want to know the truth, Doc? I'll tell you the damn truth. The horse was in horrible shape when I got him, right? Sick, not sick, but full of worms, blood work all messed up. Horrible ankle, among some other little minor lameness things. Fixed him right up, got him healthy. This horse was a monster. Paisley used to have him in for 42 years ago. Do you know that, Doc? Do you remember that, Doc? You're the racing secretary. Do you remember that? Oh, oh yeah? Oh, okay. Well, I just wondered how he got so good. I go, well, that's how he got so good. He's got class, and he's got a trainer, okay? And we got him healthy, and that's what the, and that's what happens, okay? You want, if you want to learn something about training horses, you know about being a race secretary. Now, you don't know about training horses, Doc, okay? So that was that. So I figured, well, getting back to him in the free-for-all, Doc expected me, after he gave me the seven hole in the seven horse field, first start in the free-for-all, he expected me to call him up and start ranting and raving and yelling and screaming, which I wasn't going to do, about why have I got the seven hole, you posted me out of a claimer. I figured the only way to get back at him and to, and, and to tick him off was to perform well in there, make a good showing of ourselves, or even win, if we can. But that was going to be hard out of the seven hole first start. So that's what I did, shut my mouth. Because I always shut my mouth when I trained. Nobody had a problem with me. I never had a problem with nobody. Got along with everybody. Drivers, trainers, owners, everybody. But you know, there were haters out there. There were haters out there because you do good and they hate you. They accuse you of doing things that you didn't do. Okay? So anybody that was a hater, that's their problem. Because I know the truth. And the man above knows the truth. Okay? And my family knows the truth. And that's all that matters. All right, so let's move on. First start in that free-for-all, Ronnie comes down to drive him. I tell him, hey, Ronnie, you know, try to get all you can get. Win it if you can, but don't abuse him in here. First start in the free-for-all, you know, you got speed on the inside. You can't leave him, you know, you just get all you can get. So made a beautiful showing of himself. Pulled like third over, fourth over on the outside. Ronnie tipped him around the last turn. He come flying Finished fourth, got to be the length and a quarter, length and a half. First start net free for all. Good showing, I was happy with it. Following week, we win. I win, I beat the free for allers. I beat Ritmo. My, my friend Phil Gagliaro's horse, who we used to train before things happened. But anyway, uh, Ritmo was three to five that night. Eclipse went off 20 to one. And we beat him. First win in the free-for-all. Pay $42. Ray got it all. We got it all. Everything. Uh, then, after that, I raised him a uh, total of six times in, in the... Uh, four... What was it? Four, five times in the free-for-all, I think. I had two wins and two seconds and a third in the free-for-all. And the last second, he finished second to Falcon Sealster one night at Maywood in the free-for-all. Doc calls us all up, everybody that was in the free-for-all. He makes phone calls to all of us and says, Hey, listen, uh, i got to let you know. I wanted to warn everybody before time so they didn't think we pulled a shot. Uh, I opened the box up and Falcon Sealster's in the race. 
So I got to let him run. I want to let all you guys know he's in there. Oh, okay. I guess we're all racing for second then, right, Doc? <laughs> yeah, that's what they used to do in Chi-Town. Yeah, he opened the box and didn't know the Falcon was going to be in there. Sure you didn't, Doc. Who are you trying to kid? <laughs> Come on. That nonsense. Just tell the truth. All right. But anyway, Eclipse runs second to Falcon Sealster. Falcon wins. I run second. Got beat only like a length and a half. With that line on there and those other free-for-all lines, we took him to New York to sell him. We raced him at the Meadowlands. He was in against Save Fuel in a free-for-all race. I'll invite, I think, out there. Save Fuel. That night, Save Fuel set a world record in 51 in the piece. I was in there. Carmen Abatello drove the horse. He raced respectably. Here's a tired horse. I trained him before he, we, he left the farm like on a Thursday morning to go race on a Saturday night. Shipping out there. My brother took him out there with his wife. I trained him at the farm on a Wednesday. Trained good. He's a tired horse. He goes out there and he's in against these monsters. He performed well. Well, after the race, Carmine Abatello says, Hey, how much you guys want for this horse? And we said, We want 75000 He goes, Really? He goes, Well, I'll tell you what to do. They got a race over at Roosevelt. It's an optional claimer for 75000 put him in there. I think you can get him claimed or sell him. So we listened to him. We took him over there. I put him in the following Saturday at Roosevelt. I wanted Joe Mars Jr. to drive him because, you know, we knew him from Chicago and he was, you know, out there in New York then driving. And uh, put we put Joe up, but then uh, Joe uh, said he couldn't drive him because he was obligated to another trainer's horse out there. And he told me, put Maridoki up. Well, I, I, you know, I didn't know him personally, Maridoki, but I knew who he was. He drove in Chicago sometimes. He said, put Maradoki up. So I put I put Doki up. And uh, I flew out there with Ray Howard for the night of the race. And uh, Scott was out there with his wife already, you know, and everything. But I flew out there for the race. I warmed him up that night. I always warmed up Eclipse big. I used to brush him the last quarter in about 28 seconds. All the clockers would be out there with the clocker at Maywood. And clocking him. Yeah, I'd brush him last quarter in about 28 flat. That's how he liked to be warmed up. And then he raised like a bear. So I'm warming this horse up. I'm telling you, there must have been 50 people at the paddock gate there, the trainers, looking at this horse warm up. I buzzed him the last quarter, warmed up big. He was the best in there. I knew he was the best. Well, go ahead, what happens in the race. Race goes off. He had like a three-hole. Maritoki drove this horse all over the racetrack. I mean, I mean, this guy all over, in, out, did everything he could do to get him beat. Okay, bottom line, this is no joke. Everything he could do to get him beat. Even crashed the guy. Almost crashed the guy and come real close to him, grabbed up, moved over, whatever. I was so mad after the race. I went into the driver's room. I packed my colors in my duffel bag. Ray and I had to catch a flight because I had to get back to Chicago. I had a lot of horses racing. And I'm walking out of the driver's room, getting ready to leave, and Joe Mars Jr. comes running after me and says, Hey, hey, Dan, Dan, come here. where are you going? I got a flight to catch, Joe. You know, I got to go. And he goes, hey, is that horse still for sale? That horse still for sale? I go, yeah, yeah, he's for sale. 75000 Joe, talk to my brother. He's here. Okay, I got to go. I got to get, you know, traffic. This New York traffic, brutal. Got to get to the airport. Talk to Scott. Next day, we sell him. $70,000. 50 check, 20 cash. Bobby Heil. Bobby Heil. Guys, remember him? He bought him. After that, Bobby Heil, he tried racing him in higher classes, couldn't do much with him. Scott took a picture of his ankle. I think I still have that picture around here somewhere. He took a picture of his ankle the day we sold it, that right ankle that was bad. It looked like it looked like somebody planted a golf ball in there. They still bought him. They still bought him like that. They don't care, those guys out there. They, they buy, they don't care. Of course, racing good, who cares? He races on that. We'll inject him. We'll get that ankle down. But anyway, Bobby Heil raced him. He never raced that good, and at the end, he wound up racing them in like 20 claimers and somewhere in there. I don't know how much of the money they got back. Hopefully they got, you know, a good chunk of it back. But he never did any good with them. Because, you know, Eclipse was, he had that bad ankle. There's just no two ways around it. Just, it can't last too long. You only can inject it so much. You can't put cortisone in there more than once a year. You should do it. You know, maybe twice a year you can get it. But you keep putting cortisone in there, you just mess the cartilage all up. You're just having the horse with no cartilage. Right? So you can't, cortisone, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Acid, that's another story. But it's only going to work so long, you know. And uh, it worked for uh, 12 races for us, for the Eclipse. I raced them 12 times and made 52 grand in purse money with them. And then we sold them for 70000 So that was the story with Eclipse. The fun times of Chicago harness racing. But the point I was trying to make with that story was that's the kind of things that trainers go through, the trials and tribulations of a harness trainer in Chicago and the things that you go through and what can happen to you if you're successful. And people get jealous, like race secretaries, or track owners, you know, people like that. They get jealous of you, so they try to mess you around any way they can. Yeah, and that's exactly what Dr. Rotsky tried to do to me. You know, I don't hold no grudges against Doc. I talked to him recently on the phone when uh, I called him about that nonsense that that guy, Joe B. was writing on Barn to Wire that Doc said that I was, uh, Doc supposedly told him, he's barred, he can't come back here, he can't get stalls. Really? Really? Well, that's a big lie, okay? Big lie. Okay, because when I retired from training in 1999, I left in good standing, right? I was always in good standing. Always. I was never barred, kicked out, none of that nonsense. So I called Doc up. I said, hey, Doc, did you say that to this guy, Joe B., about me? Because you know it's a damn lie. He said to me on the phone, no, I didn't say that. I go, okay, so you're telling me that this guy, Joe B., is lying. I'm doing something. I'm making a recording right now. I'll be right there. Uh, this guy Joe B is lying, right? And he's on a, one of these harness forums telling the world that you said this. So I wanted to hear it straight from your mouth, Doc, if you said that to him, because you know it's true. You know that I never did anything, all right? But race worked my butt off. And you know, yeah, yeah, I know it, Dan. Yeah, yeah. No, I never said that. Okay. All right, Doc. And I want to let you know I'm not recording this conversation. I don't need to record it, okay? Like I was going to do when I was first mad a couple of days ago when I called you and you didn't answer. But I'm not going to record it. I just want to hear from you. From you, Doc, that you didn't say those things to this guy, Joe B, that he's claiming. And if you did and you're lying to me, well, that's your problem. Because deep down inside, you know the truth, all right? So that's that. But anyway, that's my little story about Eclipse. One of the things that went down, so there are so many other things, so many other things I want to talk about over, over time, make some more recordings and let you guys know what it's like to be a trainer in Chicago and enlighten you on Chicago harness racing, which I love, always will love, will bet it until the day that I die, because that's me and that's my background and Chicago will always hold a strong place in my heart and so will Chicago harness racing. Good day.